Hey everyone, we are officially back for our Sunday weekly warm up show. Oh my goodness, we're going live a few minutes early so everyone gets to slowly ease themselves in. If you're listening to this after the fact, um, when we stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or LinkedIn, or even if you're listening to this in a Teach Better Talk podcast episode, we are so appreciative that you're tuning in. But something special about this show is that it's streamed exclusive in the private Facebook group over at teachbettergroup.com. This is the spot where you get to engage in the comments and like like and heart and ask our guests incredible questions. And so we want to encourage you that if you ever have the time to come join us live on Sunday nights. We know many of you are committed to family obligations, which is such a blessing. But if you ever have a Sunday where you can tune on in, we'd love to have you at 8 p.m. Eastern over in the private Facebook group. And if you haven't joined that yet, feel free to do that. This is a good time. It's the new year. We send you really good tips and tricks. We got people asking questions and sharing resources and answers and Let's just be honest. It's just more of the Teach Better family and more free resources that we want to get in your hands. So we are going to transition here. I think I've successfully stalled for two minutes as we're getting everybody in. Hopefully they're throwing those green hearts in the comments. I have people on screen I haven't even mentioned yet. Brad Hughes is in the house. And let me tell you, we have an amazing guest. We will be right back. We are live for our Sunday weekly warm up back after winter break. We have Brad Hughes in the house and Epek Williamson, which I know you guys know these faces because Epek has been on the show before. She had a time with us that all of you said was not long enough. So guess what? We brought her back for the new year. And of course, the one and only, my favorite host, the host with the most. Mr. Brad Hughes. How are you doing, Brad? We'll start with you. Oh, Brad, you're muted. We're such amateurs. Brad, you, you're you're muted, so we don't even hear you. Hey, maybe that's a little bit better. That's, that's a great way to kick off our first Sunday weekly warm-up of the new year, forgetting to turn my mic on. Well, that's my I mistake mean, of the day, Ray. It, you know what? Here's my, you know my theory. You get one <laughs> hiccup a day. So if that's it, Brad, you are golden. Like I I, uh, I could awesome. go into all of the mistakes I've already made, but we'll just pretend that uh, since we're seeing each other for the first time here, and it's our first kickoff of the Sunday weekly warm up here, streaming exclusively in the Teach Better private Facebook group. We'll call that my one and only mistake of the day. But now that I'm on the air with you live and with Epec Williamson, we have a wonderful show lined up and I'm doing really, really well. Excited to welcome 2024 and welcome everybody back into our Sunday weekly warm up space. We've got people joining us live. And if you are joining us, let us know who you are and where you're joining us from and what you're looking forward to hearing from EPAC tonight. Oh, and also tell us if you were recently accepted. We're going to talk about this. Our new ambassadors were officially selected right. and notified. Our new grid method cohort was officially like announced. So there's so much to celebrate. Let us know what you are celebrating as we are right into the first week of January. Epek, how are you? Thank you for coming again on the show. I love, 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 love our conversations. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is my third time, believe it or not, Great. like with you guys. And um, I'm so happy to be here. And uh, especially as the first show of the year, 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so fun. For those of you who may not be familiar with EPEC, we will have her introduce herself, but I have to say, I literally was just thinking about EPEC. I was going to text you or message you on social media. It's probably Instagram is where I stalk you the most. And because I kind of had this thing this year that normally I don't fall into 
where I was like, okay, this year I'm setting some goals. I need to see some changes. I need to be on a consistent meditation schedule. And of course, who's my go-to when I want some of that like life reset coaching? It's EPEC. Guys, I'm not kidding. I know we bring a lot of guests on and we sing everyone's praises, but there's just some people you connect with who really can like help you make change versus just be a part of your cheerleader squad. EPEC, I just love your resources. I love that they're free and accessible. I am such a fan. So thank you. This is such an appropriate first Sunday weekly warm up. Thank you so much. I'm grateful and thankful. You know, I know that there's probably a more official way to introduce you. So do you mind introducing yourself, uh, what you do in education, all those good things? And then Brad, I think that we might need to do a little intro too, because we have some brand new friends in our Teach Better group here. So Epec, we're going to start with you and then we'll kind of go around and do a little, hey, 2024, let's meet the let's meet the team. Sure. Thank you. So uh, my name is Epec Williamson. I, I was born in Turkey, uh, but I now live in Canada. So I'm a Turkish Canadian uh, and um, I'm a transformation coach, um, self-actualization coach and positive intelligence coach. So I have quite a few hats and I'm also a meditation teacher, speaker and author. Um, I like I have uh, meditations for children and teenagers specifically and um, new generations have a different space in my heart. And uh, I know that our future is they are our future and our educators accordingly also have a really uh special place in my heart because they are the ones who are uh, preparing new generations to the future so the uh, teach better team is like uh, I, I really love what you are doing uh, everything you do so uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here uh, supporting your work and uh, maybe giving a few tips and tools for uh, the audience to use at work at school at home uh, if i can that's what this is all about trying to give everyone those tactical tips and tricks so everybody can be a little bit better whether it be personally professionally anything in between Brad, that's why I love being on the show with you. It's a great space for us to uh, gather in the best and the brightest and uh, new and emerging educators that we want to make sure everyone in our network gets introduced to. And as a, a repeat guest, EPEC has so much to offer. And as you mentioned, Ray, we had an opportunity to uh, to interact and to dive into conversation with EPEC uh, in the Sunday Weekly Warm-Up Space back in 2023. It seems like a year ago now that we... <laughs> I had an opportunity to do that, but uh, now is our time to dive in with EPEC and to uh, and to help everyone get reacquainted with her and all that she has to offer. So fun. Brad, I know that people know you because you are like my favorite person on the planet, but <laughs> in case we have some new friends, because we do, right? We want to sure give do. a huge shout out to the new ambassadors that were just accepted to the Teach Better Ambassador Program. Applications for that were opened in November, and we just launched this year for the for the first time ever, we've been talking about doing this since like 2015. First time ever, nine years in the making, we have a grid method certification cohort that we are kicking off. They were officially notified just a few days ago. I already see some people in the comments celebrating they were accepted. We have never had so many applications for something that we just like really hope to do well the first time. You guys know that we love a good pilot program. So uh, we could only accept a few and we want to celebrate the ones that were selected. And for those of you out there that may have applied for either of these programs, but maybe uh, weren't selected this time around, I can, I can promise you it is a numbers game and you will be selected in the future. I can only promise. So uh, please make sure you keep an eye out for those applications, but huge celebration for those incredible people. I'm already seeing them in the comments, Brad. We have lots of lots to celebrate uh, here in the Teach Better team. Our Teach Better family continues to grow. We have nearly 8,000 members in our private Facebook group now, Ray, and that's 8,000 reasons to show up every Sunday night if you can join us and 8,000 reasons to celebrate all of the goodness that's happening in education right around the world. So good. So, Brad, uh, who who are you? Who who is this stranger on screen? Well, I, I'm I'm one of your pilots of the airwaves on <laughs> On Sunday night here in the uh, weekly warm up space, my name is Brad Hughes. Uh, like EPEC, I'm from Canada, I, and EPEC and I both live in uh, southern Ontario, Canada. 
Uh, right now, I'm a school leader and a chief encouragement officer at an elementary school in Waterloo Region, Ontario. It's my 30th year in education. Uh, have been fortunate to uh, teach children and youth for uh, yeah for 30 years now. And uh, school leadership is uh, my day job, uh, and it's also uh, a, a pleasure to be uh, training and development specialist here with the Teach Better team. And so connecting with you and with uh, with all of our guests and all of our Teach Better family members live, whether it's on the Sunday weekly warm up or on Teach Better Talk or whatever it is, any opportunity I have to interact with wonderful educators and really shine a light on the heart-led work that all of us are doing in our spaces is uh, what I'm all about. I love it. Friends, my name is Ray Hewart. I'm currently the CXO and co-owner of the Teach Better team. And I like to say that my job on the Teach Better team, like really is to hang out with Brad Hughes and bring <laughs> really awesome people into our network. So each and every one of us here in the Teach Better family can add valuable educators to our, to our PLN. It's not a numbers game, it's quality over quantity. And that's why we love to show you the real people in our network. We like to bring them on shows and interview them and, and also love to see them in the comments, sharing resources. This is the year to commit to building a professional learning network. And I hope that you join the Teach Better team along for the ride because we have met and will continue to meet some incredible educators. Epec, of course, being one of them. Epec, tell us a little bit about how you got into your work. You obviously work in education. You also work outside of education because your goal is to just help everyone in the world. But something I love and have always appreciated about you is your vision to see meditation and the skills that come with that it be the start of every single student's day at school. And I, I love that mission. Would you mind speaking to that a little bit? Of course. And I'm so uh, happy to hear that you remember my... <laughs> of course. I, I told you I'm kind of a, a like dirty fan. I told you. <laughs> so uh, for the ones who don't know, of course, I will repeat it. Uh, my... Uh, mission statement is bringing the world closer to calm one beautiful soul at a time and um, I do like everything I do is aligned with that uh, mission statement and my vision uh, ultimately is uh, bringing meditation to every school every classroom in the world and uh, have children start their day with at least five minutes of mindfulness meditation practice uh how I came uh, into this is that, like, as I said, children and educators are, are the most important uh, members of our uh, society, community, uh, because they are our future and they are not uh, living in a really... Um, comfortable uh, situations or circumstances there's so much stress so many things that everyone is dealing both educators students uh, teachers uh, parents so uh, my goal and mission is lowering the level of stress for as many people as possible no matter what age they are uh, that's that's my job that's what I try and want to do in the world so it is my my work, everyday work. It's wonderful. I know, Brad, we have lots of goals of things that we want to ask EPEC to focus on today. We'll be getting to that very soon in our Sunday strategies section. But the one thing, one thing I want to make sure our community here is um, that our community here is aware of is the app that you have so many beautiful meditations on. For those of you that are interested in just getting a little bit more peace in your year, maybe of a goal that might align with using a resource like this. I would love to encourage all of you to check it out. There are so many free tools on here. So while we might get off track from that subject, we have a lot we wanna share in store, but Epec, would you mind sharing a little bit about where our educators here can maybe get some of those meditative resources? Yes, um, the uh, Insight Timer app, it's I-N-S-I-G-H-T, Insight timer app is a free app for everyone to uh to find meditation not only that uh, there are also live sessions i did today an, a live session for example about abundance and uh, manifesting uh, it was one and a half hour show it's free 
And uh, all the meditations, thousands of meditations, also um, thousands of teachers uh, like share their stuff. Uh, so it is a very beautiful uh, space for anybody who wants to meditate, who wants to learn meditating or uh, continue their uh, practice. Yes, this is it. Thank you for sharing, Ray. Um, so I, I invite everyone who wants to make this year a, a year that they connect with themselves, with their loved ones better, please try meditating. This is this declutter your mind and let it go is one of my uh, most played meditations. And I have over 80 meditations on that platform, but I am only one of the 19,000 teachers. So it is unbelievable. We have like there are 25 million subscribers because most of it is free. Uh, and and so many people need uh, support so many people so through these live sessions and meditations we try to bring support to the ones who cannot afford to go see a therapist work with a coach or take yoga meditation classes even so uh, it is a beautiful platform thank you for bringing it up ray and uh, thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity to talk about it no, I absolutely want to encourage everybody to do that, not only for themselves, but we are headed into a Monday as this show is obviously our Sunday weekly warm up. This might be a great use of your bell ringer time. Take one minute, two minutes, three minutes to dedicate. You can put this on. You do not need to do the work yourself. You can facilitate this by simply exposing your students to this resource and allowing them to participate. You might choose to do this every day, which is, of course, the dream, but you also could choose to do this once every so often as your students need that calming. For me personally, it would either be walking into a Monday or that class you have coming right after lunch, like they are psycho. It looks like Ebeck has an idea. <laughs> uh, one thing, like, thank you, uh, Ray, and there are so many meditations for children starting from one minute to up to five, six, seven minutes. Uh, I would uh, encourage teachers to start with one minute, two minute uh, practices. There are plenty of them on the app. Please try it with your children because um, you will see bullying, stress, uh, all the um, acting up from uh, students. It will help with all of that. I, I guarantee you. Mm, so good. I love a teacher resource that has like endless stuff because, you know, I hate when you find a good resource. There's only like two or three resources, pieces that you can use. So I love this as endless resources. Let us know how you use it. We'll be right back. Brad Hughes will be kicking us off for our Sunday strategies. Welcome back, everyone. You're with Ray Heward, Epic Williamson, and me, Brad Hughes, in the Teach Better Sunday Weekly Warm-Up Space, streaming live and exclusively every Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern in our exclusive private Teach Better Facebook group, nearly 8,000 members strong. We're so glad that you're joining us now, or maybe you're joining us later. We're streaming on the socials beginning Mondays at 8 Eastern, and it's also on a episode of the Teach Better Talk podcast. We have lots of of wonderful conversation, lots of great comments happening in our live Facebook group. If you're joining us live right now, remember, let us know what's coming up for you in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Ray and Epec and I really thrive on those comments. We want to know what you're thinking and how we can make this time really meaningful for you. And we are now in our Sunday strategy section of our show. Uh, Ray and Epec, this is an opportunity for all of us to dive into a few key strategies with which educators might approach their week differently or with more energy or more determination. And, and Epec, you uh, were talking before the break about your dedication to meditation. 
uh, to calm, to mindfulness, and to meeting the needs of especially dysregulated children and youth through a variety of strategies. And one of your particular passions is working with teens, working with adolescents to strengthen their mindfulness and therefore, and, and thereby strengthening their resources to cope with life's many stresses. Yes, Brad. Uh, today, actually, I wanted to talk about that. I, and uh, I did a session on Inside Timer about the same very topic. And uh, before diving into the fascinating world of teenagers, I would like to quote Ron Taffel, uh, very well known uh, author and educator. He says, as kids reach adolescence, they need more than ever for us to watch over them. Adolescence is not about letting go, it's about hanging on during a very bumpy ride. So it's not easy to guide and teach teenagers, not for parents, not for teachers and educators. And maintaining a calm attitude is the most important thing we can try and establish. And teachers and educators are not just teaching subjects. They are guiding these young minds as they navigate their journey to adulthood, right? So creating spaces of radical calmness, I call, is key to helping them develop their thoughts, clarify feelings, understand their feelings, and make those crucial decisions. So consider the profound link between state of mind and cognitive function. Our stress responses, which is an ancient survival tool, can still hijack our logical thinking. And by differentiating our uh, the real tigers from paper tigers, parents and educators can um, create an environment where both adults and children or teenagers have the chance to get calm. And this is especially crucial for our rapidly developing teenagers. Their emotional centers are on overdrive, making them sensitive, intense, and calm settings become like a canvas for their greatest thinking powers. And uh, now, why do calm adults matter to these young minds? Well, emotions are contagious. Adolescents highly tuned to our emotions and benefit from our calmness as it transfers into their ability to think and feel clearly. And when we listen, they start talking. So our calm demeanor really encourages them to share what's happening in their lives. They talk to adults who listen and guide them calmly, allowing them to figure things out on their own. You might remember, we all have a teacher that we remember from our childhood that it treated us as if we are an adult, adult to adult uh, conversation, rather than treating us as a child. You don't know, you can't say, or you don't, act this way. Um, so being that person, the person, the one that is listening, um, makes a huge difference, huge change uh, in the perspective of the teenager. Discipline is another area where calmness matters. Discipline means to teach, not control or punish. So consequences when delivered thoughtfully become valuable lessons. So we want well-disciplined teens who make wise decisions. So um, problem solving is also a critical skill we aim to nurture. In calm settings, our children can think abstractly, making like logical decisions. We want them to consider consequences, linking near and long-term results to their choices. So through radical, radical calmness, we can support their journey to develop and sharpen their thinking. Empathy. Empathy is so crucial too in our interactions. So correcting them with calmness makes it clear that it's because we care. And when upset, they should understand it's out of deep love, not anger. So um, what do we live for, all of us? What do we want at the end of the day? The only thing we want is love. Everybody is living to get love. So the more 
compassion and loving uh, we approach to teenagers, the more we get to connect with them. And the more we connect, the more they start to trust and start to share with us. So spending um, really quality time with teenagers, uh, with doing something that they like, like if, if they are they like playing a game, playing a game with them. Uh, one of my clients the other day, she has a teenager daughter. Uh, she said, and she has uh, some health problems too, her daughter. Um, and, and that because of that, she's quite reactive. And she said, I found out that she loves puzzles. And the other night I got her a puzzle and we started to do the puzzle together. And while doing that, she opened up. She started to answer my questions. She started to speak. Tell me about her day, her experiences at school. So finding something that they like, the child, the teenager likes, and like meeting where he or she is and doing that activity together opens them up. So these are um, little uh, things that to try and uh, implement maybe for educators, for parents. Mo most educators are also parents. So um, these are what I come up with. Epec and Ray, there, there's there's so much that's coming to mind as I as I want to continue conversation and invite those that are joining us live to, to let us know what's coming up for you in terms of those important concepts of empathy, mindfulness, connection, uh, creating spaces where teens and adolescents feel welcome and safe and vulnerable. Ray, as a as a former middle school teacher, you, you you've got lots of experience with uh, kids right on the cusp of adolescence. And when you think about what Epec is uh, championing here, what's coming to mind for you? So I, I couldn't agree more with what EPEC is saying. I know there's so many educators out there that agree and already like commit daily to trying to bring in like common interests to the classroom, right? Whether it be with lesson planning or, or, or connecting. So I love this direction. I felt so similarly uh, to Dustin and Dustin's comment. He said, this is so true. My high schoolers mocked our daily mindfulness moments at first, and now they ask for some time to spread out in class whenever we have the time. So I, I want to kind of note that, Epec, if you could speak to the educators that maybe have not gotten over the hump, right? They've tried mindfulness. They've even maybe tried meditation or something along the, those lines to, to create this type of culture. And it was so negatively perceived by students that after a session or two or three, they stopped, right? So many educators fall into that bucket. I, I want to celebrate the fact that Dustin has seen the shift that can happen when you persevere with these skills because many students as well as adults, myself included, are very resistant to do this. It feels very fluffy. And so therefore it's mocked and therefore they're not seeing the change and they quit too early. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. Uh, I would say um, as an educator or teacher in this uh, classroom, if uh, they want to bring mindfulness and meditation uh, into play and they are receiving some reaction, what I would do, I would say, hey, guys, this is something that we will do because it is good for you. But if you are not liking what I'm choosing for you, I am giving you the task to come up with suggestions yourself. Bring some ideas, some alternative meditation or mindfulness exercises or apps or whatever you have. And let's look at what you have and pick one and try that one. So leaving, uh, giving them the responsibility to come up with something might be the way of, of getting their buy-in slowly but surely. But if they understand that it is what it is, we, we are going to do this. Let's do it the way you like. How would it? Would you yeah. like? I love this direction. I love the confirmation that this isn't going away, right? There's some safety in that for everyone. This is something we're doing regardless. It's happening. This is a this is a secure element of our, our daily habit. Therefore, 
What it looks like can vary as long as it exists within the parameters. I love that you're offering students some choice and voice. I also love that you're giving the security of the fact that this doesn't just go away. That benefits so many of us, not only adolescents. So I, I love that reminder. If you were to think through something that you think would be beneficial for our community here to keep in mind as they head into the week, maybe they're going to chew on using maybe mindfulness for themselves or for their students, but what's maybe a call to action we can leave our community with before we transition into our Sunday spark and kind of everything else, of course, our Sunday show always includes. So there's one thing that I, I want to uh, mention uh, because it happens. We are human beings. Uh, even teachers get mad. And while sailing through this bumpy ride, if you feel like you are coming close to losing your cool, you can say, right now I'm so upset that I can't make decisions or give consequences. I want to think this through instead of just reacting. For both of us, I'm going to calm myself down and we will talk when I'm ready. Uh, so take care of yourself, uh, process your thoughts and return ready to support your students, your children on your journey. So, uh, and I have three quick steps before we go to the other uh, section uh, that I would like to share to stay calm with teenagers. And these, they are notice, Pause, do anything except yell. Don't yell. Notice, pause, and anything except yelling. Speak. Mm, so <laughs> good. So many things to think about. Do not forget this is not only being recorded live, but you can refer back to it at any time, not only in our private Facebook group, but also on our YouTube channel. I know many of us will need some of these reminders, need to hear it a few more times. That's why EPEC is not only here to support you now, but here always with our Teach Better community on top of her resources, which we'll share here in a bit. Brad, are you ready for our Sunday Sparks? Ready to spark some thinking, some conversation, and uh, maybe some challenge for the week ahead. I cannot wait. We'll be right back. Still in 2024, one of my favorite commercials, Mr. Brad Hughes, always on it. This is our Sunday Sparks. Here's what I love about this. This is something positive that exists in the world, something to think about, and hopefully something we can learn from either by communicating a specific message to our friends, family, loved ones, students, and or something we can actually bring to our students as something that they can keep in mind for the week ahead. Brad Hughes with the best Sunday Sparks. Let's hear it, Brad. What do you got for us? Ray and Epec, I'm wondering if, uh, as you have turned the calendar page on the new year, 2024, uh, if you're familiar with or if you've even begun to think about or contemplate a one word to guide you in the year ahead. So many uh, educators and, and many, many folks of all walks of life are being encouraged to select a one word for 2024. I've seen it as a described as a touchstone. I've I just read a blog article where uh, the writer refers to it as her nudge word, the word that nudges her in the right direction, the word that helps us course correct when we may feel out of sorts or off track. And I'm just wondering, Ray Nepak, just to get the conversation started, if you have ever selected a one word for the year, uh, what that experience has been like for you, and if you've selected one for the new year. I always do. Uh, and last year, for example, my word was expansion. Uh, and I expanded my horizons, literally. And this year, my word is blooming. Uh, I believe that uh, this is the year that all the seeds that I planted will be blooming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will <laughs> collect, start collecting the uh, fruits. Oh, beautiful by the way let me tell you this i love your music uh, like selections it i i can't stop here i'm dancing while you're playing <laughs> i love that with all of our shows little little good jingles in the middle to, to dance to while in the background it's so fun i would love to see people's one word in the comments we've got plenty of teach better family members here still lit with us live obviously if you need to pop out and pop back in as you go that's the beauty of having a live recorded time with your community but please let us know if you've selected a one word i think first of all 
I love calling it not one word, but what phrase did you use? A nudge word? That's it. I love a nudge word. I think that that's like something that really helps me. Um, my word this year is eventually. I, I think I've committed to it. Brad and I had a conversation about this recently, and I think eventually is my my go-to. Brad, you've convinced me literally after our conversation we had. I think eventually that that's really going to take root in everything that you uh, do and feel and experience, Ray. And it's a wonderful word. Uh, I love that. I think it gives you a, just a loving uh, nudge uh, reminding you that uh, eventually uh, the right things and the right people, places, and opportunities will emerge if we just remain open to them. I think it's a wonderful choice. Look at all these cool comments we're getting. I like present. That one's really good. That was very, like, that one that was kind of my vibe, too, like wanting to be really present this year. Thrive. I love thrive. And friends, if you have not chosen a word yet, I think I just learned that you need to reach out to EPEC because her vocabulary is like for these words, it's so much Stellar. better than some of the ones that I would pick. I'd be like, love. And I'd be like, okay, wait, let's like stretch our vocab to make it more inspiring. I, I think this is great. So, oh, connection just came in. These are great. Love this. Ray, Ray and Epec, I just wanted to let uh, educators know that in addition to reflecting on and selecting uh, a one word for our year, uh, there are lots of resources available that might help you to spark conversation with your students, whether you teach four-year-olds or 14-year-olds uh, to help them define the year ahead, to help them select what matters to them. And this is one resource. It's uh, at, uh, it's at uh, getoneword.com. And what I wanted to point out at this site, and I'll link these back in our Facebook comments, is in addition to signing up for a free uh, one-word uh, prompt uh, that comes to your inbox uh, once for a week, uh, you can also create your own poster. So uh, Ray, I'm just going to type your word in there. That's eventually. Yeah. Oh, we, we got to get rid of that uh, equal sign, but I there like we it. Go. There you go. And we'll create the poster. And as this scrolls up, do you see a background that kind of tickles your fancy oh, there, God. Ray? Yeah. Can I do the, can I do the, the, oh, you got it, the sand and the wave. And that's, I would always want to be at the beach. Any of those is perfect. Terrific. I'm so excited. This is uh, There cool. are some for uh, that that have more of a uh, elementary or middle school. Yes. And there it is. I'll send that to you after the uh, after the show wraps. And so that's a uh, that's a free resource that uh, you and students can use to create your own uh, posters as well. There are lots of classroom resources available, uh, free and for purchase. Uh, that would allow you to create a lot of different activities for uh, young kids, adolescents, uh, as well as uh, as middle schoolers, Ray. So there, there's lots of opportunity for you not only to reflect on and, and maybe to share your own personal reflections and stories with the students and the communities that you serve, but also encourage students themselves to reflect on and select a word that helps them course correct, that will help them nudge themselves and others in the right direction and and, and set themselves up for success in 2024. I absolutely love it. Love it, Brad. So fun. And this is an opportunity where you can make that a big project and like open up Canva and search for pictures and all that stuff. That's great. To me, Brad, this is a great way to get the same outcome, but it's like easy, quick. Like you don't have to dedicate a whole lesson to it. This could be a quick bell ringer. Like it literally is instantaneous. So that I really like that vibe. This is kind of the easiest start. And then of course, there's so many fun programs out there to make it more personalized. If that is something you have time for as you head into the 100%. new year. So cool, Brad, thanks for bringing that up. Pleasure. All right. As we wrap up our conversation here, we want to thank you all of our Teach Better family for being a part of our Sunday weekly warm up. We know that this is time that is very, very important. And this show only exists to get you ready for the week. Thank you for those of you that joined us live, but also thank you to those of you who chose to catch this after the fact. Our Teach Better team loves to just share content whenever you need it, whenever you're ready for it, to make sure that you always have accessible free resources as an educator and a community backing you anytime you have a concern. I'd love, EPEC, if you could share where our community could stay connected to you, since of course, if they haven't done so already, you got to be a part of their professional learning network. Thank you, Ray and Brad. Uh, well, I am. Uh, when you Google my name, you will see me. But it's ipekwilliamsoncoaching.com. I'm on Facebook, on LinkedIn, Twitter. You name it, everywhere. <laughs> 
If any of you need any help connecting with anyone here on the show, whether it be a team member or a guest or anything in between, uh, please let us know. Everyone here in our Teach Better family is very well connected and happy to send you a direct link to make it easier to help with spelling. We have some great guests in line for 2024. We are booked solid for the next few months with people sharing their insight, sharing their story, and hopefully a few panels in between. So keep us updated on what you enjoy about the show. And Brad and I are only here to best support your needs and, and be a part of this community. Epec, thank you again for, for joining the conversation. Thank you. And uh, may I also uh, volunteer for the last show of the year? <gasps> now that you started the year with me, maybe close the year with me. Um, I like that. I like that. So we either need to decide, is it the end of the school year? Is it the end? Is it like December? We, we have so many options. Say, I would say December. Okay. Like handing the 2024. Let's Done. Do Done. Brad, write that down in our secret notebook of information. I've got it. Got it? Perfect. Friends, thank you so much for all that you do. Let us know if you need anything and have an amazing week ahead. Do not forget to celebrate those brand new Teach Better Ambassadors. Celebrate those brand new Grid Method Cohort Certification participants. There are so many things going on right now, including a January New Year's challenge. If you haven't checked that out, there's some free professional development freebies that we're giving away. So go check that out website. And of course, there's the Teach Better Today morning show happening Monday through Friday. Brad, I'm missing things. Admin Mastermind every Tuesday. It's just never going to stop, guys. Let's do this. 2024. <laughs>